Hi and welcome everyone! Have you ever worn silk before? Come and join me. I would like to share with you guys the life cycle of silk. This slide will be included the introduction, the life cycle of silk, the impact, and also the mitigation. We will start with six facts about silk. Did you know that silk rope is stronger than an equally thick metal wire? And to produce one kilogram of silk, 104 kg of mulberry leaves must be eaten by 3,000 silkworms and a single silkworm can produce up to 15 meters of filament in a minute. On top of that, silk is inherently fire retardant, so if the silk burns, it will curl away from the flame and extinguish itself. It takes roughly 5,000 silkworms to produce a pure silk kimono. The shimmering appearance of silk is due to the triangular prism-like structure of the silk fiber. Now, we're gonna move on to the history of silk. The production of silk originates in China, in the Neolithic, and is a fabric first produced from the filaments of the cocoon of the silk room. Not only used to make the fine clothes, silk was used for fans, wall hanging, banners, and as a popular alternative to paper for writers and artists. It became a staple source of income for small farmers. Next, we're going to take a look at the life cycle assessment of silk. It started with the raw material, manufactured, packaged, distribution, consumer use, and the end of life. For the extraction of raw material, there are several commercial species of silkworms. Bombyx mori, which is the caterpillar of the domestic silk moth, is the most widely used and intensively studied silkworm. The process of silkworm production is known as sericulture. Sericulture is the cultivation of mulberry leaves, the tanning of silkworm, the gathering of threads from their cocoon, and the weaving of silk. As for the manufacturing process, the production of silk started with the silkworms and mulberry leaves are placed on trays, twig frames from the silkworms are prepared, next the cocoon are wake, after that the cocoons are soaked and the silk is wound and spools, and finally the silk is woven using a loom. For the packaging of silk, the raw silk will be exported in folding cartons or reels, such as silk filaments worn in skins. The silk skins are packed in blade bells and wrapped in a double layer of jute fabric and plastic film. And silk products are packed in boxes, for example, which are lined with water-resistant paper. The distribution of silk will be started from the silk factory where the silk was made. The silk will be distributed by airplanes to be sold worldwide and will using the lorries and cars to be sold at the local stores. Up next is about the consumer use. In France, more than 17% of silk fabrics in French market have been traditionally used for clothing. While in United States, it has been a pioneer market for imported Chinese knitted silk products, initially mainly thermal underwear and now also elegant casual in form of t-shirts and in germans the german consumer favors natural fibers because germany has been importing a variety of silk garments accessories and interior decoration fabrics while in japan it is traditionally the largest silk consumer because japan relied entirely on local silk production mostly for kimonos next is about the end of life of silk the silk can be reused and reusing discarded pieces of fabric can create a new product. Reusing, redesigning or upcycling is regarding as an eco-efficient strategy. The silk also can be recycled by recycling, we could reduce the need to make fabrics from raw materials. This can save energy and avoid the pollution that takes place during traditional dyeing, washing and harvesting processes. And the silk can also be disposed naturally since the fabric is pure natural and biodegradable. It has a much lower carbon footprint and also one of the natural textiles that is compostable and impedes biodegradation. The production of silk will also impact the environment in terms of the production and the consumption. In terms of production, it will cause water pollution where toxic waste found in water such as suspended solids, biodegradable organic matter, toxic organic compound and heavy metal. This will affect fish and aquatic organisms. 
it will also cause chemical pollution consists of several thousands units of sulfates generated by industrial discharge. In terms of consumption, the production of soap will lead to air pollution. This is because the textile industry pumps between 1.22 and 2.93 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. Luckily, we could reduce the environmental impact by using dye products that are developed from plants, minerals and insects, using scrubbers to collect particulate matter, reuse water from pretreatment processes, and reuse of steam condensate. In conclusion, sericulture had an impact on the textile industry for centuries. The growing production of silk has contributed to the toxic pollution that the world faces today. Although the finished products of sericulture are luxurious, we also should deal with the problem that is raised from production of salt. That's all for me. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel to get more information on life cycle assessment.